Hi, welcome to Kids Club Online from Spring Hill Baptist Church. I miss Chris and today I was taking a walk and well, praying. Today we're gonna be learning about a time when Jesus prayed. Stick around and let's see what you can learn today. Say, uh, Casey, what you got there? It's a million dollar bill. You can hold it if you want. Really? Whoa. A million dollar bill? Okay, uh, I can take it back now. Oh. Okay. Tim, yeah. Tim, you, you gotta let go. You gotta let go. I'm trying, <laughs> but I just can't let go. <laughs> Tim, don't worry about it. It was just play money. Wait, so I didn't just destroy a million dollars? No, look, I've, I've got a bunch more right here. Oh, okay, good. Because that would have taken me like a million years to pay back. So I don't know what happened there. It was crazy. Once I got that money in my hands, I, I just couldn't let go of it. I totally get it. And you know what? That actually reminds me of our Bible story for today. You see, money isn't the only thing that we hold on to tightly. Unfortunately, a lot of us hold on to worry like that. If there's something that makes us feel concerned, we, we grip it like a million dollar bill. We keep thinking about it over and over and over until we just wanna cry. But today's true Bible story is going to teach us a better way. It's going to teach us to let go of those worries and to give them over to God. Plus, it won't teach us how to make a million dollars. <laughs> nope. Okay, this just in, it will not teach us how to make a million dollars. But I think we should still read it. How about this? In just a second, press pause on the video, then open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, we'll see you back here. Isn't that story intense? Can you imagine what it must have been like for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? He knew he was about to die on the cross for our sins. It was gonna be the hardest and most painful thing anyone could ever go through. Hey, speaking of painful, I have an idea for a challenge. Oh, I do not like the sound of that. What is it? We're gonna play a game called Shock Potato. Here's how it works. We're gonna pass this back and forth. At some point, and we don't know when, this is gonna shock whoever is holding it. The first person to get shocked three times loses. Oh man, <laughs> how bad is the shock? I don't know, but there's only one way to find out. Are you ready to play? <sighs> okay, let's do it. Three, two, one, go! go. Here we go! Oh, oh wow, it really does pack a punch. <laughs> Round two! Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. All tied up. Okay. <laughs> Don't let it get ya! Don't let it get ya! <laughs> alright, alright, two, two to one. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh no. Here we go. Come on. Be nice, Jimmy Tater. <laughs> Tied it up, tied oh, it up. never get used to that. <laughs> Honestly, so nerve-wracking. Well, everything's on the line. Whoa! Oh, no. Victory! You beat me at my own game. Yes, I win. You know, that was actually pretty painful, though. But you know what? The worst part was the anticipation. It was knowing that something bad was coming, and you were just waiting for it to happen. Yeah, I'm with you. And that's kind of like what Jesus was going through in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew something bad was going to happen and he was just waiting for it. But he wasn't just going to get shocked by some silly game, he was going to be killed on a cross. Can you imagine how he felt? Actually, we don't have to imagine because the Bible tells us. It says in Matthew 26, 37 that Jesus felt sad and troubled. Have you ever felt that way before? 
I know I have, and it's no fun at all. It feels like something really heavy is weighing you down. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. Tim, I'm gonna need your help. Would nope. you put this backpack on? Gladly. Thank you. Now, Tim, you've probably never had to worry about dying on a cross like Jesus, but there are all kinds of other things that people, especially kids, can get worried about. Maybe you're worried that your, your team won't win the championship. Or maybe you're worried that you won't score any goals during your soccer game. Or maybe you're worried about school. Or the big math test that's coming up. Or maybe you're worried that you have just so much reading homework. Or maybe you're worried that you're gonna get a bad grade in science or in social studies, or in spelling. Maybe you're worried because everyone in your family just keeps fighting. Or maybe you're worried because someone in your family is, is sick. Day after day, there is more and more to worry about. How's that feeling, Tim? Uh, really heavy. <laughs> I can imagine. And how do you think it would feel to carry all these worries around with you all day long? I would not like that at all. Yeah, that would not be fun. But that's what it feels like to carry all of that worry around with you. It's, it's no fun, it's heavy. It feels like it's weighing you down. So what do you do about that? Well, you do what 1 Peter 5, 7 says. Turn all your worries over to God. He cares about you. That's right. The Bible says that God cares for you and wants you to give your worries over to Him. And the best way to do that is through prayer. When you pray to God and tell Him about everything that's troubling you, it's like a huge weight is taken off of your shoulders. Yeah, and you know what? That's exactly what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. As soon as he began to feel sad and troubled, he fell down on his knees. He didn't waste any time. He put his face to the ground and began praying right away. Hey, that makes me think of a question. What kind of things do you worry about? Press pause and discuss. Everybody, welcome back. Jesus knew he was going to suffer and die on the cross, and it was too much for him to carry alone. So he turned it over to his Father, God. At first, he asked God to take the suffering away, but then he said, if it's what you want, God, then I'll do it. Yeah, that's how much Jesus loves you. Even though he didn't want to suffer and die on the cross, he was willing to do it so that your sins could be forgiven. Now, thanks to Jesus, not only can we turn our worries over to God, we can turn our sins over to Him as well. Amen. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you again next week. But until then, bye bye now. Yeah, bye, everybody. Listen up, I have the perfect plan to take care of this Jesus. We'll have him crucified, we'll bury him and never have to deal with him again. Do you really think that's gonna work? <laughs> Jokes on you. Here we go, check it out. From the beginning of time, you hated God. Cause you wanted to be like him, but you're just a fraud. You put Jesus in the ground. You put Jesus in the ground You put Jesus in the ground But you can't keep a good man down It is finished, he has risen The grave couldn't hold him down I'm forgiven, finally living The grave couldn't hold him down The stone was rolled away And all I have to say is Ha, 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 jokes for you The grave couldn't hold him down So that didn't work quite like I had hoped Still deceive his followers. It'll be easy. 
So now you run around lying, roaring like a mighty lion, seeking someone to devour. But I got that resurrection power. Cause you put Jesus in the ground. 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 But you can't give a good man down. It is finished. He has risen. The grave could hold him down. I'm forgiven. Finally living. The grave could hold him down. Couldn't hold